Hello everybody, I am Lucas from, from the Flame Core team, or Spydon as you might know me if you hang out on our Discord or uh, on uh, GitHub or on social media or whatever. Uh, and, but today I'm not going to talk about Flame, today I'm going to talk about a tool that we use a lot for maintaining Flame called Melos. And uh, this is a presentation for Immortase uh, Content Creation Competition for 2023. Right, so Melos is a tool for managing Dart projects with multiple packages, and that obviously includes all kind of Flutter projects too. Uh, and today we're just gonna yeah, go through how you like set up uh, a Melos uh, project and uh, uh, how you use Melos and what Semver is and uh, what the benefits of a mono repository is and stuff like that. So yeah, let's get started. What like what is Melos? So Melos is a tool for managing a Dart project with multiple packages, as I said. Uh, and with this, you can uh, do automatic versioning and uh, change log generation, so that you don't have to manually update the change log all the time and keep track of what version you should release, etc. And uh, it also helps a lot with releasing the packages to PubDev if you have uh, dependencies within your mono repository uh, or if you don't it <laughs> helps with everything uh, and it also sets up like local package linking and uh, installation like that so that you can have in your pub specs you can depend on the latest version of uh, of the package that you have in your mono repo but uh, locally when you're developing it will be connecting it to the the local package like it like it would have been on path, but your pub spec isn't uh, doesn't have to have path dependencies for that to work. It sets it up with something called pub spec overrides, which is uh, super handy. And you don't really need to know anything about that. You can just think of it as magic when you're working with it. <laughs> And uh, with Melos, you can also execute uh, commands uh, uh, on multiple packages in your repository, depending on uh, uh, on some filters and like if you depend on build runner, you should run this or yeah, uh, which helps a lot both when you're developing and when you want to run stuff in the pipeline. And uh, yeah, if you have a big mono repository, it can help you to like list local packages and what their dependencies are and stuff like that. Uh, and Melos is uh, by default using something called Semver, which I will talk briefly about. I guess most of you know about it. So Semver has uh, a format like this. So uh, major minor patch, it's called. So a version could look like like the latest uh, Flame version, for example, is something like that, I guess. Uh, or that, I don't really remember what we <laughs> released last. Uh, so ideally, uh, you should only bump uh, major, the first number, when you have uh, breaking changes. Uh, and you should, and uh, the second number here is uh, called minor, and that one you bump every time you have uh, new features. And the last number patch, that what one you bump when you only have a lot of uh, new bug, or not a lot, when you have bug fixes in uh, in your release. Um, and then that makes it easier for people to know, like, ideally in a perfect world, uh, if you don't bump major, it won't, and if you have a package as a dependency, uh, your package or your app will never break from it. But uh, this isn't really true in reality because everyone isn't very strict about following Semver, not even Flutter and Dart does that. But uh, yeah, if you, if you want to be a good package maintainer, you should uh, follow Semver. Uh, and then it's also easy to see if there have if like this minor has been bumped and you know like okay there have been some new features introduced or if this patch is uh, bumped then you know okay there's been some bug fixes done which can be nice to know 
Um, yeah, so let's get started with creating a mono repository for, uh, for like a, just a Dart flat or Flutter mono repository. Um, let's just let's just call it mono repo. That would be nice. Uh, so in when you use uh, Dart mono repo, uh, you need uh, it depends a little bit on what you're gonna have in your mono repo story. But if you're gonna have packages, for example, uh, and you want to have multiple packages in there, you want to have a, a directory called packages. And if you then have, for example, an app that is uh, depending on those or multiple apps that are depending on those packages, you have uh, a directory called apps. And then there is a last one for like CLI tools and scripts and stuff like that. And that directory is called bin. Uh, so then we just have three directories like this. Um, so we can go into apps here, for example, and we can do, we can create a Flutter app here. Uh, what should we name it? Uh, the, uh, this will be the Melos app. All right, so we can see that we have that one there. Um, and then we can go out and create some package. Uh, and that one we want to create as, uh, as a package and not an app. Uh, so we'll have to see what the flag is that we're sending in for that. Uh, right, so you just pass in template and package there. So let's do that. Uh, package and uh, we'll call that Melos dependency, why not? So then we have that one created in there. Uh, and for this tutorial, we'll skip the bin folder completely actually, so we can remove that one, but it's good to know that it exists. Uh, that it is like this is like the standard structure of having a monorepo in Dart, so can be good to know. So we'll remove that one. Mm. Then we can we can depend on on the other package uh, that we just created from our app. Uh, so we should have like a pubspec file in here, right? Uh, so let's just call our Melos app, blah, blah, blah. we have some dependencies and we'll add it here. Melos dependency, was that what we called it? But now, since we haven't, uh, we haven't released this package, we don't really have any, we don't have any version to depend on. So then if you did this manually, you would have to put uh, like a path dependency here. And, uh, and add the, the relative path to your package. But with Melos, you don't have to do that. So then we can just write uh, 0.0.0, .0, 0.0 here, I think. Let's check what, we, what version we got in there, actually. Uh, oh yeah, we're too in. Uh, let's see how it looked like in here. Melos dependency 001 is what it starts at apparently. Uh, so let's set that up. Oh, wait, yeah, wait. I went out there again. Uh, But yeah, as I said, that wouldn't work right now because it isn't uh, published uh, and then uh, Flutter doesn't know where to find it or pub, the pub command doesn't know where to find it. 
so let's uh, let's add some more things uh, in here. So we only have apps and packages there now. And uh, to install uh, Melos, you have to do uh, Flutter Pub Global Activate Melos, and then it will install the latest version of Melos. And uh, since I already have it installed, it will, if, if uh, there is an update of Melos, then it will install that update. Oh yeah, and here you can see that I had 3.00, but now it updated to 3.01 of Melos. So that's nice. Uh, and the base command of Melos is Melos Bootstrap, but that won't work yet because, uh, because we haven't really created a Melos workspace yet. So it will tell you, oh, this directory doesn't seem to be a Melos workspace, so I have to set up a workspace, and I can read about it here. Uh, but we, for that, we only have to create uh, a pubspec file that specifies which uh, Melos version we want, and we have to create a melos.yaml file. Mm. So I'm just going to steal the ones from Flame, and I will show you how they look like. Let's see. So we should have melos.yaml, we'll put that one there, and pubspec.yaml. So let's have a look at pubspec.yaml first. So here we can name this one whatever we want to. Uh, to have our workspace named, uh, and I don't don't think this name matters much actually. And here is your uh, dot version, and, and here is the version that you want to have of Melos in this workspace. So you can have like the you can have any Melos command installed, and then it will check. Uh, when because this one will have installed Melos like locally here too when you have done the the pub get. Uh, so then we can have a look in the this one we will have to remove a lot from because in here uh, there is all kinds of things that are set up specifically for Flame. Uh, so we can name this the Melos. Uh, Presentation, and we don't have a repository, so we can just remove that. And we know that we have packages that are within packages and that are within apps. So then you just have to set it up like that, and that is where uh, the bootstrap command will look. And um, because the, the bootstrap command will look for pubspec files and then it will try to connect all those packages together so that they are locally connected so that they don't have to go to pub and fetch versions. If you don't pin a version, then it will go to pub and check. Uh, and this can be nice to have that you only allow versioning to happen on the main branch. Uh, and this, uh, if you're using uh, uh, GitHub, then it can be nice to just get to the uh, pre-fill GitHub release creation page uh, in there. And this is another super useful uh, part of Melos, and that's the scripts. And I won't talk much about those ones today, so we can just we can save one super simple script here, and I will just show it to you. So we'll save the format script in here. Uh, and so that one will run format in all your Dart packages uh, concurrently, which is uh, quite nice, uh, and that you can do with any commands, of course. So that's it, that's pretty basic, right? So now we can try and see if it screams at us when we're running Melos Bootstrap. And Melos Bootstrap, uh, you can also write, yes, write Melos BS, uh, and it will also run Bootstrap. So now you see, now, now it's uh, not telling us that we should go to the web, web page anymore. And you can see here that it has set up Melos app and Melos dependency here. Uh, and the Melos app resides in apps, Melos app as we saw before, and another one in uh, uh, Melos dependency. 
And if you want to list the ones that have been set up, you can do a mail loss list. And you will see here you have those two. So uh, if I would show you that quickly for Flame, for example, and do a mail loss list in here, it's like, boom, we have like, yeah, lots of packages. I think it's like 30 or something. Uh, but even if you only have one package, Melos is actually quite useful, especially with the scripts. Because uh, then you can uh, reuse scripts over uh, different packages, even when they're not uh, on the repositories. And also the changelog generation is super helpful, so that you don't have to write your own changelog. Uh, so how the changelog generation works is that it uses something called conventional commits. And conventional commits are uh, a tag that you put in your git commit messages. And the most uh, simple ones are called feet and fix. And feet means like feature. And so every time there is a, a feet commit in, uh, in the git log since the last uh, release, uh, it will bump the minor version. And when it's a fix uh, commit, it will bump uh, uh, the patch version. Uh, and when you put uh, an exclamation mark after the conventional commit, there will be, uh, th that means that it's a breaking change. Uh, so then it will bump major. Uh, and you can put that after any uh, conventional uh, commit tag. So there is, a, I think it's conventionalcommits.org or something, and you can read a lot more about that there. But I, I will show you the basics of it here. Uh, so say that we go into, let's see, well, let's start with going into the package here then. Uh, and oh, we haven't actually created a Git repository yet. That can be good <laughs> if we want to have a, a monorepo. Uh, so let's do git in it here. Nice. Uh, And yeah, we're back in the Melos dependency uh, directory and we'll create, a, a, let's see here, we have, a, we have the readme here, let's uh, do some changes in that one. Uh, and we pretend that this, uh, this wasn't actually just a change to the readme because uh, something like that would usually, then you would usually put the docs uh, uh, conventional commit tag, but we pretend that this was a change to the code and that this actually, it introduced a new feature of, uh, of the package. So let's we'll write a new feature in here. And uh, then we can, oh yeah, right, we haven't actually, we have uh, plenty of things that we haven't committed here yet. So let's do an initial commit first and then we do that one. Uh, so, oops. Okay. So we'll just, we'll just do an initial commit to make it clear later what we are actually doing. All right, and now let's go into the package and uh, we'll do another change here. New feature, a really new feature, wow. And since it was a new feature, and we'll, we'll just add that one, um, and we'll do a commit that says, uh, we can do this. Uh, so this is how the tags look like. So uh, a new feature will look like that. And then you write your uh, whatever the feature is. So it could be, um, what did we introduce? We introduced, uh, I don't know, generate uh, lightsabers. Uh, yeah, we just generate lightsabers in this feature, very nice. That's a package everyone wants. And uh, there are a few more things to the conventional commit there also. So in here you can put uh, something called uh, a scope. Uh, 
and the, the scope isn't like super defined you can use it uh, like a little bit however you want so if you if you're working on features for example uh, you can uh, write the feature that you're having in here or uh, yeah some people write ticket numbers or yeah uh, but you don't have to write that here either uh, or write anything in here either uh, so you can we can yeah, skip that for now now we have our commit with generate lightsabers here and we save that oh well, we have to set that up let's see if i have some stuff already for that uh, let's wait and yeah uh, so now we can see in the git log here that we have our feed to generate lightsabers and then we can if we write melos version then it will tell us what's new here and it says ah hmm so that's actually strange uh, why it wanted to update with minor changes instead of with uh, uh, with uh, uh, no, no with uh, oh yeah right with patch changes instead of with this I think it might be because this one is zero because when this one is zero and you do breaking changes it doesn't do any changes uh, i'm not sure if it is the same here so let's let's try this will be interesting both for you and me <laughs> so now we have done a uh, versioning there and then we can uh, we can push the tags that it has created to the git repository but now this git repository is only local so that uh, that makes no sense really Mm. But then we can go in and look in. Now it has actually generated a changelog file here. And then uh, it says, it, uh, yeah, it will just yes, say pretty much what you had in your commit message there. And you can add more things uh, down in the body of the commit too, of course. And if you're doing breaking changes, I really recommend to put in. Uh, migration instructions in here too but now I'm curious let's try to do another uh, fit commit and uh, see if it still only bumps the uh, the patch one um, okay and uh, did we have this time or maybe it can maybe it recognized that it, there was no code changed I'm not sure let's uh, let's try that to so change something in the actual code mm, let me go into lib here then and in here in class we want this calculator to be called uh, or actually if we change that one the test will break down too so let's add another class in here class calculator 2 and it will be completely empty okay so let's try that instead then so we'll do a new feed and we'll say introduced calculator 2 and obviously write good commit messages that describe what you actually did now since I'm only doing bogus changes they don't really make any sense of course but then it's so valuable uh, when you're looking back at the changelog or someone else is looking at your changelog and they can clearly see what what changes have been made uh, so I would recommend to squash your commits uh, if you're doing pull requests or merge requests uh, and uh, then just keep one commit with uh, with actual change that has the conventional commit in it. All right, let's see what it says now then. If no, it still only bumps the patch. That's very strange. I wonder why. So what we can we can try this. So if uh, you for some reason uh, decide that you 
you really want to uh, to have a specific version on the next version that you're going to release, then you can uh, force Melos to set the version like this. So let's do that. And here you can add some uh, extra additional changelog entries if you want to, but we skip that for now. And then you see the current version 002 and the new one is 010. Let's continue. And then you can push tags, etc. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's do one final uh, one in there and see if it's uh, what it does. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm using all these aliases here, so gst, that's just git start, start status, and gca is just git commit all, so you don't have to be confused about those ones. Uh, and yeah, it's just normal git commands. And again, a super bad commit message. And let's try another versioning. And it still only bumps the minor here. Well, I'll have to ask Invertase about that, why it's doing that, but usually it should update uh, that one. Uh, okay, so let's do try to do uh, a breaking change and see what happens when we do that. Oops. Uh, oh, and we obviously forgot calculator free here. We clearly need that one. I'm not sure how smart Melos is. Like, I don't think it looks that deep into the code that it would be able to recognize that it should be a minor. But what do I know? Probably, yeah, yeah, it, it can't. Like that, that could just as well have been a feature. Uh, all right, so now we have only that one changed. Let's do, uh, remember that, uh, exclamation mark. That one is the breaking change. So, uh, and the forgotten calculator free. Okay, and now let's see what happens when we're versioning now. Okay, so now it is at least bumping, uh, bumping the, the this version, the, the minor version. Maybe uh, I, I think that maybe Semver works very differently when you are before uh, 1.0.0. So let's try to bump up to 1.0.0 manually and uh, see how it will react. So now we'll go from 0 0.1.0 to 1.0.0 and let's continue. And yeah, what we had uh, let's add a lightsaber class right now. Uh, and now if we write the feature, I really hope that it bumps minor now because I'm <laughs> so confused why it doesn't work like it always does when we use it with flame. Uh, all right. Uh, so now I want it to say 1.1.0. Uh, Please be 1.1.0, yes, okay. So uh, sem semantic versioning apparently works uh, quite different when you are pre 1.0.0, yes, because when you're before 1.0.0, you're uh, allowed to do breaking changes and stuff like that. Uh, the user isn't, uh, isn't supposed to expect a, a, a completely stable package yet. But once you have released 1.0.0, then every time you do a breaking change, you should bump uh, the major version. All right, so now we can we can have a look at our change log again here. 
so first we have change logs in the dependencies. Uh, so those look like that. And here you can see also that it has a note that this release has breaking changes and it says which one is breaking. And then in, uh, in Flame usually we add like a note down here with migration instructions. So it's very easy to, for the user to see how, uh, how they should migrate from the old behavior to the new one. Uh, and right now we have only touched the dependency. So you remember that we have uh, our app too, right? Which is in here. And that one is dependent on uh, on this package, but I'm not sure if we ever connected it actually. So let's have a look in here. Oh yeah, so here you can see that Milos has automatically updated this version to 1.1.0, which is our latest released version. Uh, and since the app isn't a package, then uh, that uh, Melos just uh, it, it doesn't version that one as it does with the packages. So, uh, so if you have interdependencies with between your packages, it will also uh, bump the packages. If you have like, uh, it might bump or it will bump the versions of other packages too. If, if another uh, package updates its version, uh, so that it gets new build. Right. Mm. What should we more talk about today? All right, now since we have uh, made a few versions here, as we could see in the change log, uh, oh yeah, and this is the global change log that you can find in the root of the repository and here it will list all of the packages that you have and uh, what changes they have in them. Uh, but then after you have done that and if you want to publish your packages, then yes do, Melos publish. And you will see what uh, packages that you will publish. And if you press yes here, then it doesn't actually publish it. Uh, directly. You have to run it with no dry run. I will show how to do that, but I won't publish this package since it will just put a lot of bad stuff in uh, uh, on pub. But yeah, so here I had some uh, package validation errors that it wants me to have a homepage or repository in your pub spec. So let's try to add that then. Uh, and oh, so it was just empty here. We will have example.com. Very nice. And let's. Uh, I wonder if I had to commit that. Yeah, let's commit that. Okay, and let's do publish again. Let's see if it complains at anything now. Oh, so now it would have been possible to publish it and it would have, we would have done it like this. Melos publish, uh, no dry run. But I clearly don't want to publish this package, so great. Uh, all right. That's all for today, I think. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter or Mastodon if you just search for Spydon. Or, but and you should really join our Discord if you're not there already. It's a very fun and nice community if you want to learn more about Flame or just talk about Flutter and Dart in general. All right, have a good one, everyone.